All right, here we are with uh, a Jolly Roger charcoal maker. Uh, Doug Clayton uh, got me started doing this and uh, has been a great deal of help. A you may have help. learned about the carbon cycle. That's where the uh, trees, their leaves, pull in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they process it through photosynthesis and make wood out of it. Uh, they also uh, make more leaves. They make uh, things like walnuts or berries. Uh, and all of these are uh, uh, products of carbon because uh, they come from the CO2. Uh, then, when the tree dies, like this chunk of wood here, hope you can see that it is a piece of wood and not just dirt, but the little microbes are eating it and they're turning it back into um, carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide, although you can't see it, is coming off of the wood and going back into the atmosphere. So the char the carbon dioxide starts in the atmosphere, uh, is pulled in by leaves into wood and products for the plant, and then it goes back up into the atmosphere. So uh, there are lots of uh, limbs that come off of trees in the neighborhood, and we have a wood chipper, and we can make them into wood chips like we have right here on the edge of my truck and the sticks all the sticks we break up into small pieces and we we're going to process those so we're collecting the carbon that falls out of the trees into your yard and we're going to take that carbon and transform it and here we're uh, getting ready to put uh, uh, wood chips in the tea lud. Dry chips are really important. This is our uh, chip dryer. This is the tea lud, and uh, where we're putting the chips, uh, we stack them clear to the top. Need to be real dry. Tea lud means top lip updraft. We're using sticks too. Uh, we do wood chips and sticks. Sticks have a little different quality. They they don't crunch together as, as much as the chips do. And this allows air to circulate around them. See how the chips are all packed tightly together, that makes them burn easy. We're not burning the sticks, we're just cooking them and we want the air to pass back and forth through the sticks. Here we're preparing to light the uh, tea lud, putting little paper torches down in there to get it started. Here I'm putting the lid on, you can see the slits in the lid. That allows the hot wood gas to escape and come down into the fire where it burns and adds to the heat. Put a spacer on top to hold the retort, the 30 gallon retort over top of the 55 gallon tea lug. Here my friend Bill helps me turn the barrel upside down so the slits are down and put it on top of where the fire is going to be. Now here is another 55 gallon drum. You see the hole in the bottom, so, or yeah, the bottom, top, whatever. And then we put the stovepipe in it. So this is going to turn 
put a, an oven kind of casing around the uh, retort. And here we're lighting it. Try to get lots of little fires all the way around. Part of the ventilation system. We're pumping air in underneath. Uh, the tea lot has holes in the bottom. So the air comes up through and the air comes up into the fire. It, it helps starve it for oxygen. And that's, that's the heat in there gets up to uh, about a thousand degrees. So there's plenty of heat to cook those sticks up above. And yet like a campfire, there's charcoal left under the ash or under the, yeah, not so much ash. And here's the charcoal that we made. Uh, some sticks, some chips. Now you can't just put that charcoal in the soil because charcoal sucks everything into it. So all the minerals in the soil will be sucked into the charcoal. So you have to charge it up with minerals to start with. That's what we're doing. We charge it up with uh, fertilizer and some basalt mineral. Here I think we're putting some uh, worm casting tea in it. So we're and there's the worms. We've got a little worm farm. I've got one in my basement, and they poop, and their poop is very high in minerals. Here I am feeding the worms with my food scraps, blended, blended food scraps. So here you see what used to be sticks and wood chips has now been turned into charcoal. And something happens in the process. You heat the wood chips in the absence of oxygen and it, it's called pyrolysis and it turns it into charcoal. Now that charcoal has a wonderful quality. Somehow it's transformed so that the bacteria and the little microbes in the soil cannot eat it and turn it into um, back into CO2 and send it back up in the atmosphere. Now over here this is a compost pile and it looks like dirt but it was leaves and brush a few years ago but it's already breaking down into soil and so the bacteria have eaten it and send much of it, there's a little sand in it too, uh, the bacteria have sent it back up into the atmosphere and so it's part of the CO2 in the atmosphere now. So, but that won't happen with the, over here with the charcoal because it's been processed and has changed. So, that's a good thing if you're trying to um, stop global warming or slow global warming because the more carbon you can put in the soil and keep there for a long time, um, the, the less global warming that can happen. So what we're trying to do here, what we've done is this is a pile that has been mixed charcoal and compost put together and then we put it on our beds uh, our garden beds and we grow really good vegetables here are some sweet potatoes growing now we have put the charcoal on the beds uh, not only to slow global warming but we also are making our soil very rich. The charcoal 
harbors the microbes that feed the roots of the plants. And so uh, if we have a good supply of the charcoal in the soil, it helps in the, in the growth of the plants. It brings minerals to the roots, minerals and water. It also holds nitrogen in the soil and um, has many, many good qualities.